Hello, so this is another video on solving ODEs in GPROMS. Um, in this video, we'll look at a slightly different um, equation. So this differential equation, the second order differential equation, but not in time this time around, is in space. So if we look at that, the diffusion equation, and you know, this we have d multiplied by d square a dx squared minus k a equals zero. So because we have derivative with respect to space, so x represents the, the, the direction along uh, the length of, of the tube. So it's like, like axial domain or axial direction along the, the, the length of the tube. Now, this is quite different in G-proms because in G-proms, uh, time is treated differently. In G prompts, all variables depend on time. So that time is reserved for all variables. So if you now have a variable that depends on other than time, then it is treated as a, as a partial, that equation, that, that, that the time derivative then becomes partial derivative. Right? That, sorry, that um, ordinary differential equation in space. So let's say you have an ordinary differential equation in which something depends of, um, on space, but you have like first order derivative with respect to space. So if is with respect to space in G prompts, it becomes partial differential equation. Why? Because by default, all variables depend on time. So that means we have like two dependence there, dependence on time and dependence on space. So then it has to be partial. Then you then we then use the partial keyword to write the um, the equation in G prompts. So that's the main thing that you need to remember. So which means if you have uh, an independent variable that is not time, then you have by default time dependent. So it becomes partial in that case. You know you have partial differential equation when we have when you have more than one um, independent uh, variable. Okay, so that's like an introduction of to um, distributed model in GPROMS. So we, we call that this distributed model if we have spe special uh, variation or special dependence of some variables. Now, how do we solve it? We solve this a little bit differently, um, but I'll show you. Let, let's see how we can solve this. Um, so first, let's create the model, the project. Um, we have the project. Um, then the variable type that we'll need will be um, concentration because um, A here represents concentration of, of that compound. So we need the variable type concentration. Uh, concentration. Uh, so I can do, so let me make it bigger so I can refer back to the uh, document. Uh, then edit. Uh, was the unit? Do I have the unit here? The unit is um, molar. So if I put M there, and then I can increase the upper bound to so like maybe 10,000 and leave all that. Then if I create a model, so I would like to call the model diffusion, and um, you can call it whatever you like, then delete all the templates. So do I have parameters in the problem? So let's see. I have parameter, I have diffusion coefficient D. I, I also have K as well. So I have K, I have D as parameters. Then I also have the length of the tube, four centimeters. So I have three parameters to be clear. Parameter, I have K as real. I have D as real. I also have L. Okay. Then, um, before I declare variable, one thing about this with the model here is that the concentration of A in this case changes along the length of the tube. It's not the same. So there's a kind of distribution along the length of the tube. So I need to declare the I need to declare concentration in this case, concentration of A as uh, a distribution in G prompts, as I would declare it. So distribution is like a, the larger umbrella under which an array falls. So 
That means we have concentration values at different locations along the length uh, of the tube. So I'm going to declare concentration as a distribution um, on which depends on the axial domain. So, but I need to first declare the axial domain. So to declare the axial domain, we use something we call distribution domain. Distribution domain uh, section is used anytime you are solving uh, distributed models. So that is, you have spatial dependence, spatial dependence other than temporal de dependence alone. So basically, you'll be dealing with partial differential equations in cheap rooms. Then um, I need to declare that. If I declare that as axial, as then what I, I the way I declare it is that I specify the, the range. We start from zero up to the full length of the of the tube. So because what I'm going to do to solve it basically, the way the numerical solver to solve it is I'm going to discretize it. So slice it the tube into smaller bits and solve the differential equation at each within each slide, okay? So, and the full length of the tube is from zero up to the, the, the reactor length. So that's the domain that we are looking at. Then the constant, the variable can then be declared. So I have C in this case, which is now A in the equation. I want to call it C as distribution it depends on the axial domain of now it's concentration that's variable type okay then anytime you have um partial differential equations remember you need boundary conditions so let's specify the boundary conditions so the boundary condition as given in the problem is that at at the at one end so basically at the inlet so the uh, the concentration is 0 0.1. And at the other end, at the exit, then the concentration is 0. So that's the boundary condition. At the inlet, so basically I will do uh, C at the inlet. So when Z is equal to 0, that's the inlet condition. So inlet equals um, 0 0.1. So that's the the concentration at the inlet and at the outlet, so according to the problem, is zero, okay? So C at the outlet, that corresponds to the full end when when the, the axial domain is equal to zero, uh, the full end, and the concentration is zero there. Now, the equation. To write the equation, so I need to I need a for loop. Why? Because I need a for loop that will go through each slice of the domain. Remember, is this the the full domain will be discretized into different slices, and the equation will be solved at within each slice. So then I need a loop to go through each slice. So for z uh, colon equals one. So but here I need to exclude the boundary. Sorry, colon equals zero starting from zero, but I need to exclude the boundary because I've specified what is happening at the boundary. So to exclude the boundary in GPROM, we use value called bar plus to exclude the, the inlet up to the full length, but I need to exclude the outlet as well. So to exclude the outlet, I do vertical bar mi minus. So that's how to specify the, 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 the for loop. So starting from zero, but exclude the, the point zero itself and up to the length, but exclude the outlet with that point L itself. Okay. That's how to exclude this. It's like is 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 a closed interval. Then the equation is D multiplied by second uh, order derivative of A of concentration with respect to X, the axial domain. So I'm going to do D times, so concentration, so partial, I'm going to use partial. Uh, so it becomes partial, but sec is second order, so twice. So I'll do partial derivative of C at each location. Remember, this Z is what is going through the discretized domain. Then I'm going to do that. 
if I want to do, if it is just with for, um, our first order, so I will use axial bonds. But because it's second order, I need to specify axial again. Okay. So the first axial is sending the first order and then the second order derivative. That's um, the C. Uh, then minus K, K A, K multiplied by that's concentration in this case, equals zero. So that's the equation. That's the only equation we have. Then we can solve it. So if I create the process, new entity, solve diffusion, or the solve diffusion. Then the first thing is to create the units. So unit, I'll say um, problem, let me just say problem at diffusion as name of the model. So I need to uh, set some parameters because I have parameters. So I need to set the parameters that I have. So set, I have, I can do within, um, I can do within um, problem two and um, so I will do D colon equals, uh, so D diffusion coefficient D is 1.5 times 10 to the power of minus six, 1.5 can do E minus six. Then um, K colon equals, so what's the value? Five E to the power of minus six. Then I can specify the length. I know the length is four. So L colon equals four. And I can specify the axial domain. Remember, I have axial domain, so I need to specify the value, how I want to solve it. Axial colon equals. So the way to specify it is to say, okay, we provide the method, the discretization method. So backward, we can use backward finite difference um, method, BFDN. You can use forward finite difference method as, uh, as well. Um, then I can I want to use order one and uh, 30 points. So we'll talk about um, distributed models uh, a little bit more, more in, in detail later. Then uh, then I can run it because it's, uh, it's, there's no temporal variation. So I don't need to specify a schedule, okay? So if I run it, uh, what do I get? So yeah, so trajectory problem C. Okay, so this is the profile of the of the concentration of the concentration along on the length of the tube. Okay, I hope that helps. And I'll see you in the next video. If you are new, if you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe um, and like this video if you find it useful. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.